Hello, and welcome to 5 Facts About TCPIP, the Internet's Foundation. The suite known as the Transmission Control Protocol, Internet Protocol, or TCPIP, governs most of today's communication systems. It was invented in the 1970s by two DARPA scientists who would one day earn the title Fathers of the Internet. In 1983, the TCPIP suite made its debut on the ARPANET, which would eventually evolve into a modern-day internet. To get a better grasp, TCPIP is divided into four layers. At the top is the application layer. Here you'll find the applications responsible for the transmissions, such as HTTP, IMAP, and FTP. The next layer is called transport. At this layer, the data becomes segmented into smaller pieces known as datagrams, and the type of transmission is chosen. The internet is a third layer in the model. The datagrams are now placed into containers known as IP packets, which are labeled with a source and destination IP address. The last stage is the link layer, where the IP packets are placed into frames. The frames carry on them a source and destination MAC address. At this point, the transmission across the network begins. So what happens during transmission? The TCP IP suite follows what is known as the end-to-end -end principle, where most of the burden is placed upon the two end devices, relieving the strain on the network itself. But this does not leave the network burdenless. As the frame makes its way across the network, it will come upon routers. Here, the IP packet is removed and its next path is determined by comparing the destination IP address to a routing table. Once that is done, the IP packet is placed into a new frame and is sent on its way. And so will be the case at every router along the journey. So the piece of data has successfully made it to its destination. What's next? Well, the process will now play out in reverse. At the link layer, the IP address is removed from the frame and is sent to the internet layer, where the datagram is then removed. From there, the datagram goes to the transport layer, where it is reassembled with the other pieces back into the original data. The original data is then sent to the application layer, where it can now be accessed by the user. The older OSI model is an alternative to TCP IP. Instead of four layers, it has seven, with the top three and the bottom two acting as expansions to TCPIP's application and link layers. But the process of how data is prepared and transmitted has remained virtually the same. So there it is, five facts about TCPIP. Do you have any questions or facts of your own? Leave a comment. And if you like the video, please give it a like and consider subscribing if you're not. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.